the DAOs, what are they? For what purpose do they exist? What did they bring as new that we did not have in the past? How DAOs improve the sense of democracy? Where can they be used? Which issues, legal issues, tax issues, do they raise? Responsibilities in case of using and developing DAOs that interact with reality, which buy, sell, detain things. These issues are the issues that we'll be addressing today with uh, Ricardo Lopes, a partner of our firm, and that has been working considerably with DAOs and all the issues that it raises. I'm, I'm going to begin by asking uh, what is a DAO and which issues and problems did you notice in the process that you have been working? Okay, so, so a, a, a DAO is, well, the acronym is for Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. Uh, basically, this is a, a group of people, uh, usually with a, a sharing interest, who uh, join as a collectivity, uh, which is uh, usually on a blo blockchain, uh, where the rules of the community are ingrained in smart contracts. Uh, the idea is that the DAO uh, uh, works as, as an autonomous organization and decentralized organization in the sense that there is not a person or a, a, a group of persons that collectively represents and binds the DAO or decides on behalf of the DAO. So the transactions or the decisions, uh, they are more or less executed by means of uh, pre-established codes and uh, which are represented in smart contracts. Uh, and then if someone uh, or, or if the group of the, 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 of the members of the DAO want to change any of the parameters, the most decisions, let's say the constituent decisions, then they would have to be approved by a established majority, which is usually represented by the, um, the, the tokens that are represented by the, the, the members of the DAO, which they can be granted or offered depending on the structure of the DAO. So the decisions are usually token as a majority, uh, meaning that no one has an effective control of the DAO. Uh, okay. And then, let's and say this and is as, as seen as the big advantage of the DAOs, which is they don't rely on a centralized government or a centralized decision uh, of people. So they, let's say if you compare this with the company, uh, there is not a board of directors of the company as if all the decisions would be taken by the stakeholders by on assemblies where they would approve things by majority. And once they are approved, Though they are carried out by means of smart contracts, which execute what uh, what the codes that are uh, approved they, they have, have established. Okay, and uh, and uh, legal problems and tax problems uh, that arise the, from from those important. Say, the DAOs, they they have uh, let's say the, the the advantage could be some 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 somehow their, their advantage, which is they they don't, they don't have a centralized government uh, or someone that, that represents or binds the DAO, uh, which has also the downside, that, which is while it works very well on the um, digital world, uh, where the contracts are digital or where the DAOs can execute things digitally, for instance, uh, buying tokens, uh, acquiring uh, works of art or NFTs, digital works of art, every, etc that works perfectly the problem that we have seen is now transferring this to the physical world where somehow the DAO will need to have someone or uh, be incorporated in a way that represents things for instance if they want to acquire a, a property or somehow there are formal issues that the DAO may not uh, be fully prepared to meet and in this sense, uh, somehow, sometimes there is need to be a physical or a legal representation of the DAO, like an association or setting up the DAO as a company in order to overcome these issues. But this then has the other side, which is somehow is against the proper principles of the of the DAO. 
Yeah, but uh, the truth, and I fully agree with you, is that to bridge from codes to physical reality, what we have noticed when we implement things is that we, from a, a social, a, an association without for non-profit to a company to something like that will be required to follow the ends of some DAOs. For example, some yeah, DAOs want yeah. to have a place, physical place in several countries where to meet and they want to acquire it. And, and these needs to be addressed. And that's where the lawyers yeah. will come and offer solutions like we've been doing. Yeah, I would say in Portugal, probably an association uh, would probably be the the closest that we have to what on how to form formalize a DAO into a a legal entity that would be able to enter into contracts. I fully agree with you. I think that now uh, non-profit associations normally represent best what a DAO is and respect more its core idea of, of creation. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Bye.